Good morning, everyone. So Slush asked me to come and talk about the first 1,000 users. I think it's a really interesting, important journey for any startup. And hopefully what I speak through today will help you get from not sucking to from sucking to not sucking as fast as possible with as few mistakes as possible. I'm going to talk about acquiring uh, users as in consumers and also around con acquiring SMEs or enterprise businesses as well. So hopefully relevant for whatever kind of startup you're running. So I like to think of this kind of stage. The clicker's not working, guys, sorry. I like to think of this kind of part of the story as the maze. So how do you get out of the maze? How do you get your first 1,000 people? And lots of startups never make it. They literally won't find a way out of it. And that's, that's a kind of challenge. And I got this, oh, sorry, guys. I got this kind of dystopian picture of a maze, kind of Squid games S, because it's really brutal. Uh, it's really hard. It can be very demoralizing. Uh, and you don't quite know where you're going. You'll make some wrong turns. You have to go back. But that's all part of the journey and all part of the fun. So a little bit about CarWow just to set some context. So CarWow is a marketplace for helping consumers buy cars and sell their current cars. So what happens is a consumer goes on. They want to research what car they're looking to buy. They use us. They then build their car, receive offers, and ultimately we connect them with a the dealer and they buy it. And then we help them sell their current car in a similar way. So I started this company 12 years ago, so straight after university. Uh, I did finance at uni, and then I did an internship at a fund management company, and it put me off that world of finance for life. Those two months were the best two months of my life, because it meant I didn't spend the next 10 years in finance. And I, the advice I always got was set up something in an area that you enjoy, and I've always loved cars, and I've always found that lots of people come to me and say, this is a massive financial decision, what should I buy? And that's our vision as a company, to help consumers work out the best choice for them when it comes to a car. So to give you an idea of scale, so this year alone we'll have sold over four billion pounds worth of cars. That's across the UK, Germany and Spain where we operate. We've got about 350 employees now. And we also run a kind of side part of the business. Uh, we run a huge amount of content. So we have the world's largest car channel uh, on YouTube. So we get about 60 million views a month on average, six and a half million uh, subscribers. And lots of people know CarWow because of the YouTube stuff. So it's kind of a weird side business of it, but a really, really good marketing channel for us. And as the host said, we've, got, we've been very, very lucky to have Europe's best investors behind us. So we've got Excel, Balderson, Vitruvian, uh, and Daimler, Mercedes-Benz. But this has taken us many, 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 many years to get here. And winding back to think through the kind of very early days, what I kind of call the hustle. Because this is the bit where it's potentially just you on your own as a sole founder, or you and a couple of uh, co-founders, or maybe early employees. And it's really, really, really brutal. Again, it can feel very demoralizing if you're not getting the traction. Uh, but that's all part of the journey. That's all part, part of what you have to go through. So don't get too demoralized by it. And you've got to work hard on it. I think don't go in with unrealistic, unrealistic expectations. There's very, 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 very few overnight successes. They just don't really exist. People underestimate just how long this stuff takes. So I looked up uh, in the database how long it took CarWow. So it took us just under 250 days to get our first 1,000 users. So a user for us, that's not people buying a car. So it's a hell of a lot longer to get 1,000 sales. That's just people giving us an email address so they can configure a car and get offers. So uh, that's a long, 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 long time. Lots of sleepless nights during those 250 days thinking, what are we doing here? But so just to give you an idea. And then we launched in Germany five years ago now. So by then we had the technology, we had quite a lot of funding, we had lots of people. It still took us nearly 100 days to get those first 1,000 users. And what we did in the UK, we couldn't just copy and paste. We had to do things differently. So again, just set expectations that this is not going to happen very, 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 very fast. And then we got a little bit quicker in Spain, but still, this is, uh, this is a substantial amount of time. So I think because it takes so, time, so much time, you've got to find a way to survive. Now, you may have raised some money. You may have not raised some money. We hadn't raised money at this point. So my co-founder, David, he had to do three months with Carwell, three months contracting as an engineer. That was the only way he could survive. We couldn't pay a salary. We had no money in the business. I had to do quite a lot of kind of side consulting. I had to rent out my uh, spare room on Airbnb. 
So I'd be running the business, then changing bed sheets uh, the, every morning to get new guests in. And that was the only way we could survive. We, we couldn't raise money at the time. And so we had to find kind of side hustles just to keep going. And again, you just got to find a way to make sure you've got enough income somehow, personally as well, to survive those kind of first maybe year or so. I think when it comes to listening to your customers, again, be they consumers uh, or businesses, you've got to listen and build a lot of empathy with them. But you've got to listen, but not too closely. So if I'd have listened to everything that everyone told us as a consumer or as a potential customer, we wouldn't have been here. We had car manufacturers saying, we're never going to let you do this. We had car dealers saying, we're never going to pay for this. And, they're, and they're ultimately, they were wrong. They pay for it now. They, they let us do various things. So you can't listen too closely. And the same when it comes to VCs or angel investors. There'll be some people who give you some advice, and they may be wrong. You've just got to ignore it. But you've got to build that empathy with the consumer. Try and understand what they want, what you can offer, because it's going to change your proposition a lot. So keep your ear to the ground, but don't take everything too seriously. I think, as the, as the host said, Paul Graham said, do things that don't scale, and this is critical. You've got to keep it manual. I've invested in quite a lot of angel investments, and, I, and they talk to me about the scaling their invoice process, or they're getting ready for scale, and it's just a waste of time. Just keep things incredibly manual, because it'll evolve. It'll change. So when we first, when we first started, uh, we had to do... We, we tried to get car dealers to do a load of work. We tried them to manually put together offers to send to customers, and they got bored after sending about 10. So we had to do it for them. We had to do it for them with literally a calculator. So we had to, every morning, we get out our calculators, work out offers for dealers, and send it on their behalf. Now, the customer, the consumer, they thought it was all automated. They thought it was all super smooth. In reality, it wasn't. It was me with a calculator doing it for them. And the same with when it came to invoicing, same when it came to sending out contracts, anything like that, we didn't bother automating it whatsoever. And I'm very, very glad we didn't, because had we have done it, it would have, been, it would have been wrong anyway, because everything was evolving, everything was changing so quickly. So don't be afraid of a load of hard work, a load of hustle, and keep it very, very, very manual. I think a very, very critical point is try and work out how to explain yourself. So the words you use to explain what you do as a business to customers, to VCs, you've got to keep testing this. Because there's a lot of ways to explain what you do. There can be tiny little changes, little tiny words that make a massive difference. So we spent a huge amount of time A-B testing this. So using things like Visual Website Optimizer to test, using Facebook ads, Google ads, just all the time tweaking. And serious, serious, serious uplifting conversion right here. And some words just really hit home, some just didn't. And when we took it into Germany, we thought, oh, we'll, we'll just explain ourselves to customers like this. And in reality, in Germany, we explain ourselves in a very different way to a German consumer than we do to a British one. And that's fine. We've got to keep testing it to see what works. And you'll get very significant uplift in conversion rates if you keep testing it. Um, very, very, very critical. You've also got to be very surgically focused. Don't be crap at a lot of things. Be great at one thing. So when we first raised investment, we only sold Volkswagens. So you could go on our website and buy a Volkswagen and no other car brand. So we did this because we thought we're going to get great at helping anyone who wants to buy a Volkswagen. We're going to work very closely with Volkswagen and their dealers and become really, really good for them. So forget about everything else. And we raised money just by doing that one brand. Because then we got confidence in ourselves that, look, if you're going to use us to buy a Volkswagen, it's probably going to work for any other car. If you're going to, as a dealer, pay for it, it's probably going to work for any other uh, car dealer as well. So just do one thing. And again, it's a lot of uh, early stage companies, they try and do everything. Uh, as an example, I invested in a, a great uh, little startup called Lick. They do home decor. And they do lots of stuff now, loads of different types of paints, loads of wallpapers, blinds, about to do curtains. But what they started with was just a few paint colors in one type of paint. They got really, really good at that, raised a shitload of money, and then they could expand out. But don't try and do everything, because it, it, you just won't be that good at it. You won't be that relevant to that consumer, that, that supplier. And VCs get that if you're good at one thing within a market, that'll probably extrapolate. So just do one thing really, really, really well to start with. I would fully recommend charging from day one. So don't give away what you're doing for free, particularly to SMEs or enterprises. This is a few reasons. One is purely psychological. 
if you're paying for something, you value it more. So if you've got, if you've got a business using your, your products, your service, if they're paying for it, they're just going to value it a lot more. They're going to take it more seriously. The other thing is, obviously, you want to bring in some form of revenue to help the business grow. And then thirdly, you want to prove, assuming you're going to go and raise money, you want to prove to investors that people are willing to pay. Investors aren't going to be particularly impressed if you've just got a load of people that you're just giving it away to for free. Now, obviously, that's a little bit different on the consumer side or, or taking a freemium model. But do try and get particularly uh, businesses paying for your service. It'll really, really, really help you out. And then also when it comes to selling to businesses, go very, very junior. So go to the person who you're really going to help. So we made some mistakes in the early days. We went to some big car dealer group. We spoke to the CEOs. They got quite excited, but we were tiny. So them, for them, selling one or two cars couldn't care less. They don't care. However, you go to an individual salesperson who has a target of only, say, two car sales a week. If you help them with one, you've done 50% of their job for that week. So they really, really care about it. They love it. They get really, really engaged. So don't go super senior. You won't be relevant. You may get a meeting, but you're not going to impress them because you're just not going to have that volume. So go really junior. Find the pain problem that you're solving for that almost individual or little team and get them using it. They'll get engaged. They'll be able to then get budget for it. They'll be able to then sell it to their colleagues uh, or get it within their, their uh, financial planning. So don't go to CEO. As tempting as it may be, go very, very, very junior. And then when it comes to fundraising, so you go to your stereotypical vest-wearing VC. What are they going to say? What are they going to think? I think getting to that 1,000 users is a kind of key point. They're going to want to see you do this quickly. They're going to want to see you evolve as well. So don't worry if you spoke to them at one point and then you change what you're doing. That's fine. They'll, they'll understand that and they'll be impressed. They want you to be agile. They want you to be nimble. Uh, and they want to see you hustle and make it happen very, very quickly. And Mark Suster, when it comes to uh, raising money, has that great quote, of, VCs invest in lines, not dots. So what that means is the first time you meet a VC or an angel investor, you're a dot, you're a single data point. So that you come along, they may be impressed, and they think, okay, yeah, interesting. The next time you meet or the next time you send an update, you're another dot, and hopefully you're, drawing a, you're on an upward trajectory. So they see that line growing. The third time, hopefully the line of the kind of velocity you're going at is increasing all the time. So make sure you keep in touch with VCs. So when we, we uh, got our first, I think, seed round or Series A from Balderton. We met them two years before they invested in us. They gave us some really good advice. We followed up a year later with a meeting. They said, brilliant, nice progress, still too early. So only after two years did they invest. So we'd become a bit of a line for them. And I see it now with angel investments. The best CEOs are sending updates to potential investors every three months, every six months. They're sending a few bullet points, a little deck. Some of them are sending video updates. And it's a really, really good way to build that relationship. Even now when we're raising fundraising, most of the, the VCs or PE firms that we're talking with, I've known them for already for two years. So I've kept a, kept a dialogue. We're too early for some of them now, but hopefully in two years of raising, that we're, we're in that sweet spot. So do keep in touch with investors. Don't get dissuaded if they say no, because that's their job. You just got to keep going back to them and keep engaging with them so that they build that line for you. Embrace the challenge. It's going to be hard work. There's going to be highs, there's going to be lows. But this is a key kind of critical journey. You won't, you won't end up exactly where you thought. You'll deviate. Your proposition will change. Your pricing will change. What you think you are will change. Your vision may even change. And that's all absolutely fine. That is all part of, part of this journey. Make sure you celebrate the wins as well. So this is, was, this is my uh, co-founder, Alex, uh, now wife. Co-founder, David, now CTO. This is when we sold our first car. So we had that bottle of champagne in the fridge for a very, very, very long time. We were waiting to sell our first car. We had it in the fridge waiting, and I think it was a Monday morning or something when we finally sold it, cracked it open, uh, and celebrated. So celebrate your first user, your 10th user, your 100th user, your 1,000th user, and keep celebrating, because startups are hard, uh, and you've got to celebrate the wins. It, it's never, it doesn't actually get easier, so just keep, make sure you celebrate, have fun, uh, and smile. Because in reality, this is just the beginning. So getting those first 1,000 users, again, you, then you've got to get 10,000. Then you've got to get 100,000. You've got to keep scaling. 
but this is just the beginning. It's a really enjoyable part of the, the startup journey. It's where it feels most real and you're most evolving and it's the fastest change. So you should enjoy it. Uh, smile, don't get demoralized, you'll make it through. Uh, and I hope that was useful. Thank you very much.